Hello 10A history class. I am just recording for you some whole class feedback on your remote learning task three exam answer that you had a go at. The question that we asked you to try and tackle was how useful are source B and F for an inquiry into the recovery of the Weimar Republic between 1923 and 1929. Now, this usefulness question is probably one of the trickiest on the exam paper. And the reason it's so difficult is because sometimes we get carried away with just focusing on the source and we forget to look at our own knowledge. Sometimes we get carried away with our own knowledge and we forget to use the source. Sometimes we forget to look at the provenance of the source, so who's written it or what the nature, the type of the source is and why that might affect how useful it is. But mostly the reason people struggle with this question is they forget to say what the sources are useful for. So in the case of this question, we're asking you to work out how useful are the sources to tell us about the recovery of the Weimar Republic. So anything else that these sources might tell you is not relevant, is not useful unless you can link it to the recovery of the Weimar Republic. So I'm just going to go through with you some of the answers that some of you submitted and things that were really great about your answers. And then I'm going to help guide you with how you can improve your work, because although there were some fantastic parts in everybody's answer, nobody's answer was perfect. And lots of you have still got quite a lot to do to make sure that you can improve your marks for this style of question. So the first thing I'd say is look back at your medicine exam paper, if you have it with you, and look at the feedback you were given and the whole class feedback you carried out on on the usefulness question within that prep exam, because that will help you with this paper and this uh, question too. Now, the students that did things that I thought were really nice in their answer is the, those that you can see in the left hand column. So I'm going to start with Dan. So Dan focused on looking at what it was that the Weimar Republic was limited at in order to assess how far they're likely to recover or what their recovery process was like. So he writes, however, it does show the Weimar Republic's weakness of using foreign policy for stability because he's referring to source B, that picture that uh, you had in your remote learning task three, where the Nazi cartoon is trying to highlight that maybe the Weimar Republic's recovery was very heavily reliant on foreign aid. So Dan's using his own knowledge of this and he's, he's highlighted some parts of the source that I haven't included uh, on this slide, but he then links it back to the fact that the Weimar Republic's weakness might be that they are too reliant on foreign aid from America. Now, if Dan was going to make his answer really strong, what he would then do is link that to his own knowledge about knowing that the USA provided loans to the Weimar Republic to help aid them in their recovery. Theo looked at source B and in his paragraph about source B, he mentioned that the source is useful to a certain extent. And the one thing I would maybe just ask Theo to really think about with this is the word certain still leaves me a little bit unsure, believe it or not, about how far the source is useful. So I might try and replace that word certain to um, a large extent or a small extent. But I like the fact that Theo is starting to think about how far this source is useful. He then goes on to look at the fact that this source is useful for an inquiry into Germany's financial state. He's thinking about what is it that the Weimar Republic has to do to recover. He knows 
that one of the biggest issues that they faced was to do with their financial stability. So he's linking to what this source is useful for. Remember, that was one of the things I said students really struggle with. So it's great that Theo is starting to think about that. He then tries to link this to his own knowledge. He's talking about the fact that we know at this time that hyperinflation is a really big problem. So Theo is doing some really lovely things there. He's thinking about how far the source is useful. He's linking it to what exactly it is useful for. And he's thinking about the question in light of that. And he's starting to link it to his own knowledge. If Theo wanted to extend his answer and make it even better, at this point, he would pick out quotes or certain words from the actual source or the caption to really highlight that he's linking his own knowledge to the explicit content in the source. Cameron, in his answer, focused on the fact that uh, the source, and again, I'm looking at source B here, was useful for an inquiry into the recovery of the Weimar Republic. He's looked at the question and he's done exactly what we've practised in class. How do we take the question and rephrase it to give me my opening sentence? And that's really, really key. He then goes on to say how the source shows that opposition would maybe be uh, an issue for the Weimar Republic. And then hopefully he could go on and link that to the question about why that would limit their recovery, the Weimar Republic's recovery overall. But I really like how Cameron has thought about how to open his answer. Juliet has written a brilliant answer. And again, I've picked out just the bit from source B, where she's, she's also really starting to think about how far this source is useful. She's, she's made the judgment that this source is fairly useful. She's also linked it to the question for an inquiry into the recovery of the Weimar Republic. So again, she's done exactly what Cameron's done, thinking about the wording of the question. She's also obviously made a judgment about how far it's useful, like Theo was trying to do as well. She then moves on to tell us what the source shows us or tells us. And she uses that lovely word reveals. The source reveals how Germany was reliant on Wall Street and the US loans. She's telling me what she can infer and what she knows from this source. It reveals not everyone was pleased about the funding that they were receiving. And then she's included a quote from the source. Here is your enemy. Just to really show me as the reader and in the future an examiner that she is using this source explicitly. She's not talking generically about any source. She's using the source that she's been asked to use. The German reliance on the loans meant the Wall Street crash of 1929 caused huge economic failures in Germany. Again, she's thinking about the source because she's thinking about the, um, the Wall Street and what she can see. But she's starting to link it to her own knowledge, isn't she? 1929, huge economic failure. She then turns to the provenance of the source and she's considering what this source actually is. It's a political cartoon. And it's not just that, it's a right wing political cartoon. And she highlights the fact that this cartoon will be biased towards right wing opinions. And she weighs up that therefore, when we think about how useful this source is for telling us about the Weimar recovery, she's considering that it might not reflect every person's opinion in Germany at that time. So then she makes this final judgment that source B, taking all that into account, is fairly useful. So that was a really lovely um, example from Juliet about how to analyse the source and think about its utility. So let's just have a look at what I would like you to do now as a class. I would like you to read back through your usefulness answer that you did as part of the remote learning task three. And I want you to really make sure that you have weighed up the content of the source, what the source is actually telling you, 
So by quoting from the source or quoting from the caption or saying what you can see, I want you to use that and I would like you to compare it to your own knowledge. You cannot judge how useful the message of a source is unless you compare it to what you know about that topic. So you must link key information from the source to the key information you know about that topic. And then you're able to make a judgment of how useful that source is to tell you about the recovery of the Weimar Republic. So have a go at trying to make sure that your work is really explicit by using the source and using your own knowledge. I'd just like to highlight some misconceptions. Some of you are starting to compare the sources. You do not need to do this. I want you almost to imagine that the sources, you are, you are looking at the sources, sorry, to answer almost separate exam questions. So imagine the question is, how useful is source B for an inquiry into the recovery of the Weimar Republic? And you just answer it focused on source B. Then your next paragraph, you are just focusing on source F, imagining the question is, how useful is source F for an inquiry into the recovery of the Weimar Republic? Please use your own knowledge. I know I've already stated this in what I'd like you to do, but without your own knowledge, you'll be limited to one or two marks out of eight. So it doesn't matter how brilliant the rest of your answer is. If you do not use own knowledge, your mark will be severely limited. And lastly, for your misconceptions, I would like you to link back to the question. Every explanation that you write about the source and how useful it is, you've got to refer back to those words, recovery of the Weimar Republic, because that is what you are judging. Spelling, punctuation and grammar errors, there actually were very few, so well done, Year 10. But just to highlight two that stood out to me, Weimar Republic needs capital letters. Few of you use little letters for that. It is the name of the institution that was ruling at the time. It is therefore a proper noun if they need capital letters. And Nazis, again, is a proper noun. It needs a capital letter. It's a name of an organisation. And there is no apostrophe in Nazis after the I and before the S. A few of you are writing Nazi apostrophe S. That's incorrect. It's just Nazis. My standout moment for the whole class feedback on this task is Amelia's answer. And I've just taken a section of her answer to highlight to you why this was a standout moment for me when I was reading through all your work. So Amelia has started off her paragraph on source B, highlighting what it is exactly that she can see. Source B shows, and then she describes what it shows. She's picked out key words, she's picked out key content because remember you have to do that then she talks about what that might represent so she's inferring from the source now that it's representing the US and their financial centre she then goes on to link this to her own knowledge remember the most important part of this question is how you link to your own knowledge she talks about the fact that the Weimar government are recovering through systems and um, plans like the Dawes plan that Streisman has set up. She goes on to give us even more detail about that, which is brilliant. She then evaluates that. She then links it back to the source, because remember, if you talk about your own knowledge for too long and you don't link back to the source, the examiner's going to think that you've missed the focus of the question. So Amelia's really thought about this and she's linked back to the source. This shows that the Nazi party in particular wanted to show that the USA was the enemy. She then at the end makes sure that she really shows that she is linking back to the question. She's talking about what it is useful for. It's useful for an inquiry into the recovery of the Weimar Republic. And she really refers and utilises that in her answer. So hopefully this has helped you have a bit more of an understanding about how you can improve your answer. Apologies um, in the section where I've put Amelia's um, 
standout moment. Uh, there's a couple of typing errors in there, and that is completely my fault. I'm not sure why the meaning this is in um, black text there. I don't know what where I've got that from. So that is my fault, not Amelia's fault. Um, but hopefully this video will help guide you a little bit and will help you improve your work. And well done again to Amelia for that fantastic answer. But well done to all of you that gave this a go, because it's a really difficult question, this usefulness question. And if you can get your head around this, you will make brilliant gains in your exam because it is on um, two of your exam papers. So it's really important that you get your head around this one. Well done, Year 10. Good luck with you completing your um, improvements.